Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon uh, to all the audience. Uh, I think we have full house today. So first and foremost, before we start our seminar entitled uh, STEM Education in Southeast Asia, I would like to express my gratitude uh, to Professor Cheryl from University of Philippines, Dr. Primana from uh, Bandung Institute of Technology and Dr. Chok Chai and to our lovely moderator today, Prof. Yong. So as of a bit of introduction, today's seminar uh, is organized in conjunction with the virtual convention of my STEM ambassadors. Our intention is uh, for us to have some sharing of experience across uh, our countries. Uh, we have Malaysia, we have Indonesia, Thailand, and Philippines. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this session to Prof. Yong. Over to you, Prof. Yong. Very good day, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Mas, for the very kind introduction. Um, it gives me a great pleasure to host um, a very interesting session, STEM education in Southeast Asia. I'm very pleased to have three renowned speakers from three different parts of the uh, region, from Indonesia, from Philippines, as well as from Thailand. Um, but most of all, I would like to welcome everyone. We have a, a hundred participants in this session. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining in us today. Just for the benefit of those who are not able to, to uh, attend this session, we also have a um, session in the YouTube. So should you have your friends who are not able to come and join us, they will be more than happy. Uh, we do welcome them to come in and join through the YouTube search, uh, channel, yeah? So um, I think before we start, it is only fair that we get to know you better, all the participants, all the attendees, yeah? Thank you for keeping the uh, chat session live there. I can see a lot of messages coming in. So um, we're gonna start off a little bit by getting to know you. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the first poll. Uh, I think it, is, it will be very beneficial to all the three speakers. Yeah. So um, with that, I would like to get the moderator to have the poll. So please choose uh, the poll number one. The question is, we would like to know more a little bit about you. So who are you? Are you a student, an academician, an administrator or others? So please. Um, uh, answer to the poll and then um, I think they're giving only a, a few seconds I think once again for those who just joined in uh, welcome to this session the webinar session STEM education in uh, Southeast Asia great I see some sign teachers and a few others lovely yeah so uh, I think we will be able to see the results of the poll in a little while, um, as soon as the host uh, get the results, he or she will be able to sh uh, update us. Well, I've got some computer science people, lovely. I've got the science teacher, um, right. I've got people from the faculty of education in a uh, lovely, yeah. Okay, so. How much longer is this? I'll just have to wait until everybody's in. Right, Ikwan. Um, um, Ikwan, can you share with us the results of the poll, please? Ikwan, if you can uh, share with us the results of the poll. Hey, bro, um, for the academician, we have 46%. Oh, you, you can't publish the pool with it. Okay, all right. Maybe uh, you just read out. Okay, uh, for the academician, we have 48%, followed by student, 33%, and then others, the public, 14%, and lastly, the administrator, 6%. Great, thank you very much. So, Ikwan, you can uh, remove the pool over there. Right. Thank you so much. So, um, Participants out there, the attendees, so we've got about 48% out there. So that's a result of that. Yeah, 48% academicians, students, 33%, administrators, 6%, and others. So generally, 
that's the um, participants that we have in this challenge. However, we've got about uh, perhaps another 300 more yeah, at the YouTube channel. And I believe um, we'll also would have the uh, students as well as the uh, academicians. Great. Thank you so much for um, letting us know a little bit about you. So I think let's start with the uh, session. So I'm going to start to invite the first speaker, Professor Sherilyn Monterola, uh, a professor from the University of Philippines Diliman College of Education. She's also the executive director for the Center of Integrated STEM Education and one of the leaders in Education Future Program, Office of Secretary, Philippine Department of Education. She's also the consultant for STEM in TVET initiative of the International Labor Organization Philippines, as well as the Technical Education and Skills Authority. In 2016, she was a visiting professor at the National Institute of Education in Singapore, and she holds a doctorate degree in physics education from the University of Philippines, Diliman. So um, with that, over to you, Professor Cheryl. Thank you, Dr. Yong, for that lovely introduction. Uh, allow me to share my screen uh, for everyone. So once again, good afternoon. Um, I'm honored to be here. Thank you, Dr. Yong and Dr. Mas uh, and the University of Malaya STEM Center for the opportunity to talk about um, the challenges that we are facing in Philippine STEM education, as well as the initiatives that we are doing to overcome such challenges. Uh, basically, my short presentation is two-pronged this afternoon. Uh, one, to talk about the challenges, as I said earlier, and the other is to talk about the initiatives that are being implemented on the ground. One of the greatest challenges of, uh, that, we are, uh, that we need to overcome in the Philippines is our poor performance in international large-scale assessments, such as PISA and TEAMS. In 2018, we joined PISA for the first time and sampled students aged 15 years old did not fare very well compared to their counterparts from the rest of the world. The OECD average for science was 489. Our students got um, 357. In mathematics, we scored 353 uh, as opposed to the average OECD uh, of 489. There is a need to improve on the mathematics and scientific literacies of our students. In the case of teams, we joined after a very long time, but this time grade four students sat for the test. The center point, uh, the center point in both science and math was 500, but our students scored 249 and 297 respectively. There is a need to improve on the skills of knowing, applying, and reasoning in the content domains of science and mathematics. The silver lining to the poor performance is that it is the baseline data to see how far we can improve on. Another challenge in the Philippine STEM education is that there are leaks in the STEM pipeline. Majority of the students from basic education and tertiary level choose non-STEM tracks or courses, unlike other innovative or economically competitive countries. For example, only 15.4% of the total population of senior high school students chose, for example, the STEM track. Majority were, in fact, in the general academic strand. For the tertiary level, there were 1.2 million students in science, technology, engineering, agriculture, and mathematics. But of this, 0.5 million students belong to the technology track and with 0.3 million belonging to the engineering track. These team graduates are further trimmed down based on their performance in licensure exams. As you can see on the screen, the passing rate in engineering licensure exams some, for some courses are over 50%, like for example, in chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, and electrical engineering, the passing rate are over 50%. But in the case of civil, civil engineering, it's below 50% with just about 
Another challenge we are facing in the Philippines is that on the skills demand for the Philippine workforce that has become more STEM intensive, and that would require what you call skilling, upskilling, and the skilling, um, and continuous learning and development. Our country profile in the Future of Jobs report that was done by World, the World Economic Forum in 2018 shows that there are skills that are, you know, uh, expected and are higher order in nature. So there's also an expectation of a mix of just, not just cognitive, but also technical and social emotional skills. All of these skills, cognitive, higher order cognitive skills, technical skills, and social emotional skills are in fact intuitively developed in STEM. In fact, one of the greatest challenges that we're facing concerns the, uh, the reskilling of the workforce. And they say that about 51% of our workforce need reskilling. With IR 4.0, big data, and more sophisticated technologies for manufacturing, computing, communicating, there is a need to ensure con continuous learning and development across sectors. But after talking about the challenges uh, from this slide here on, I will talk about the initiatives that are implemented on the ground for overcoming the challenges that I have mentioned. These STEM education strategies are categorized as follows. One, uh, on teacher upskilling. Two, on GIE partnerships. Three, on learner empowerment. And four, on innovations that encompass curriculum, assessment, pedagogy, and technology or learning resources in general. In the case of the Center for Integrated STEM Education or SYSTEM, which I am also leading, we have pivoted our teacher upskilling programs from face-to-face -to, -face to virtual mode. We had the teacher upskilling series about thriving in the new normal. We also had an online design thinking workshop for faculty members of the University of the Philippines system to assist them in developing remote learning innovations. Through the STEM Teaching Factory, that is also one of our programs, we were able to immerse STEM teachers in what you call um, STEM processes, experiments involved in manufacturing through virtual lab activities and simulations. We were able to successfully do this um, last December, um, uh, this is the first week of December. And they were able to train uh, teachers coming from Region 3 and Region 4. They were still able to interact with people. No? Our participants for the STEM Teaching Factory were able to interact with the people working at the forefront of manufacturing to learn firsthand about STEM careers and opportunities that are available in the Philippines. Our purpose for this is that we are trying to broaden the horizon of teachers so that when they go back to school and when they go back and uh, um, share this knowledge with their students, they will be able to share a newer perspective regarding STEM careers and opportunities available in the Philippines. As you can see on the screen, it's evident that we are working on strengthening the partnerships among government, industry, and the academe, uh, the triple helix as they call it. So system is not just working with um, the government. So we're working with the Department of Education and the Department of Science and Technology we're also working with our fellow academicians from the university and other uh, attached units, but we're also working with industry sector, like for example, a manufacturing, um, a manufacturing facility, uh, a pharma academy, and even a Unilab foundation. On the aspect of learner empowerment, we did a hackathon for our STEAM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Agriculture, and Mathematics Innovation Program. There were about 70 projects that resulted in the program. In place of the community expos, expo that we were supposed to hold last March, we transitioned it into a virtual innovation competition. From this Sorsogon STEAM innovation program, there were top winners in the fields of agri-tech, material science, life sciences, and physical sciences. But from school-based programs, we are also venturing into what we call youth-led innovation programs. That's why we are um, venturing into the agricultural breakthroughs and innovations towards equitable food security program, or it's a mouthful, but we call it AgriBytes. 
This one is in collaboration with the Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Training Institute, the Magna Anima College, and uh, the um, Social Action Initiative of the, of the church. This one is to address food security, especially so that it's a major issue now because of a high level of involuntary hunger due to, of course, a job insecurity brought about by the pandemic. Another thing that we have done is the um, launching of a series of COVID-19 comics intended for children to help them understand the pandemic and its effects. It was nationally circulated by the Department of Education and considered it not only for addressing STEM understanding of the pandemic, but also for providing social, uh, psychosocial support for young children. It was used by the Cultural Center of the Philippines as one of the main resources for young children during the pandemic. It was also distributed by the Kite Foundation to young children who are hospitalized due to cancer because of the, uh, of the, um, the beneficiaries of the foundation. Another category of STEM initiatives um, that we have focus on, focuses on curricular innovations. The Philippines has no formal curriculum for kinder to grade two in science and mathematics. The findings of teams and TISA tell us that early literacy and numeracy actually improves performance in large scale assessments. So there is a need to really um, capture them or, or catch them young as they are. So we have an ongoing project called Science of Us. This one uh, intends to develop modules for kinder to grade two and these modules integrate literacy, numeracy, and STEM skills that are appropriate for young children. Part of the innovation because of the pandemic is the production of modules, the assembly of lob in a box of, uh, that will be uh, good for home use by the kids, and video tutorials for parents uh, and other home learning partners who are, who are expected to guide them during the pandemic. Another curricular innovation that was carried on by the center was developing a STEAM research and innovation agenda for senior high school. This accompanied our design thinking framework that we embedded in a year long curriculum or innovation program in senior high school. Earlier, I mentioned to you about the 70 plus projects that were generated and they were generated because of this year long innovation curriculum, innovation focused curriculum that we implemented in about thir uh, in, a, in 13 high schools in Sorsogon. Other curricular innovations that we have uh, initiated involve micronutrition literacy for adolescents because we uh, want to prevent intergenerational bad nutrition practices that actually lead to stunting and wasting. Stunting, as they say it, has irreversible consequences that affect not only childhood but also productivity and employability in later years or adulthood. Aside from this, we also helped out with the ILO, International Labor Organization, and the Philippine uh, Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, in their what you call a STEMI and STEMifying Tibet, or the integration of STEM in technical vocational education and training. We de in my case, I developed a, de a learning design framework for integrating STEM in Tibet. There's also a curriculum guide. And after this two, two, main, uh, two main publications, we organized a STEM in Tibet right shop for curriculum planners to be able to understand the priority STEM competencies and how they can be integrated in Tibet training regulations and how they can be fostered using STEM pedagogies and STEM assessments. So uh, the next phase for this particular project is the training of trainers uh, to be able for them to really see how STEM in Tibet can work on the ground. And the aspect of remote learning interventions, we have the following. We have um, a, a, a participation in national TV. So uh, our deputy director is actually the anchor of Wonder Science uh, for junior high school, particularly for Science 10. We also have presence in, ra in radio programs in the airwaves. So we have a local and internet-based radio shows. Uh, another one is uh, covering Mindanao, uh, which is a local, uh, it's a local radio program. 
but we have a wider reach uh, through DZMM Teleradio uh, for the program Wonder Teacher. We're also assisting the Ateneo uh, Science and Art of Learning and Teaching or SOT Institute with their own uh, science show called Radio Turo Guru. On the side of the Department of Education, as earlier mentioned, I'm leading one of the programs under the Education Futures Program. Uh, it is under the Office of the Secretary of the Department of Education. That Ed is very much aware that results could be better and there's so much to be done. Uh, they launched the Sulu Edukolitad as commitment to the delivery of quality basic education. Under the Secretary's Office, they established the Education Futures Program or EFP as an innovation think tank. It is committed to evolve what you call education perennials. Um, the EFP is working on the following. One, exploring technologies for remote learning. Two, reframing the curriculum. Three, developing work readiness. Uh, four, anticipating educational opportunities from innovations. Five, um, reinforcing learning sciences, assessments, analytics, and knowledge mobilization. And lastly, smartifying learning spaces and resources. The Department of Education is co uh, co uh, collaborating with academ and uh, acad uh, from the academic and industry sectors for realizing this particular uh, programs or plans that I have just mentioned. Although I started my presentation with challenges, uh, but I would like to say that we maintain, we should maintain our optimism. Uh, the recent Global Innovation Index showed that we are already in the top 50 in terms of innovation performance. Two years ago, we were 73rd. So what I'm trying to say is that let us maintain our optimism and grit. Things would be better. Initiatives are already being implemented on the ground with stronger partnerships among the government, industry, and the academe. We just have to sustain our STEM education strategies because improvements may not happen overnight, but they will be in the horizon. So to end my presentation, uh, I would also like to be consistent with my call to continue strengthening cross-sectoral dialogues and collaborations for STEM education. So may I would like to invite you uh, to join the second Integrated STEM Leadership Summit in Asia. Uh, this one is free and fully virtual, and it's a collaboration among the following. So it's system, which I'm representing, and the University of the Philippines, of course, and the US STEM Leadership Alliance, UDLAB Foundation, MIT, World Education Lab, or MIT JWell, Semeo Secretariat, and Semeo STEM Ed Center. The theme of this year's, uh, uh, of the 2021 uh, STEM Leadership Summit in Asia is reimagining integrated STEM education, amplifying agility and transformational collaboration for a post-pandemic Asia. So please join us on January 21 and 22, 2021. It's a fully virtual event. Um, uh, for inquiries, uh, please email me at scmonterola at up.edu.ph. Again, thank you for the opportunity to share about the challenges and, of course, initiatives to overcome these challenges from the Philippine STEM education. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Thank you very much for the information. Uh, I've learned a lot when you share with me the, uh, the innovation index. That's something I'm, I know it's somewhere there, but never been able to catch up and Thank you very much um, on sharing your challenges as well. Some of the uh, good practices you have done. Um, perhaps later on, I would like to pick on one of the topic that you mentioned is uh, youth-led innovation uh, to promote STEM. I think it's something uh, it's quite interesting, but nevertheless, we, let's move on with the next speaker. Yeah. Right. Uh, once again, uh, I would like to welcome our participants who have just joined in uh, in the uh, YouTube channel and also uh, in in our through this uh, platform as well. So um, I would like to move on with the second speaker. Um, the second speaker is Associate Professor Dr. Primana Wadayanti Primadi from the Department of Astronomy Institute Technology Bandung. Her fields of air, uh, studies include cosmology, science education, capacity, human capacity building in science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Um, she got a PhD at the University of uh, Texas at Austin in the United States. So uh, without further ado, uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Primana. 
the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Professor Young. Thank you, everyone, Dr. Mas and everybody for inviting me here. And I'm happy to be part of this learning session. Um, if you would allow me to share my screen. Right, so I hope it comes through all right. Um, I'm very fortunate that uh, Professor Monterella was uh, the person before me, so I learned a lot and, uh, you know, a lot of comparison and preparation. We share similar challenges, if not perhaps uh, heavier ones in Indonesia. But um, I would like to share with you how we uh, introduce steam using astronomy as an entrance and how it is uh, projected into a number of um, areas where Indonesia is uh, most uh, behind in its development. Indonesia is a very large country, as you know, and it's very heterogeneous in all aspects. So almost a decade ago, I presented this slide to a conference in which I introduce uh, to the general public how the earth is a very complex system. A physical system is a very complex and human and all the living beings with all the interactions among them and across them made the living situation on earth a very complex system, a super, super complex system. And um, I sort of warned the audience about the possibility of uh, a pandemic <laughs> could spread, you know, without without hindrance because of the way people interact, the way people uh, relate to one another, and how everybody used the same sort of uh, natural resources to live and uh, you know of course little bit we knew that we are having this problem this year and it's the, the reason for me introducing this was that understanding the complexity uh, would entice people that they are part of this complexity they are part of this dynamics uh, it is important for them how and why and you know what sort of measure they could uh, be part of this complexity. And there are very many things that uh, uh, in a complex system, the emergent phenomena is something which is uh, making learning is, uh, is very challenging. Uh, you know, no curriculum is best for forever. The, the prediction is uh, it's not possible. So it is important to be able to be part of this dynamics mindfully. So understanding the key elements and the key processes is something that we need to, to in a way, introduce. And it, in addition to that, Indonesia has a, has a very large homework. Our workforce should be in the um, in the majority as far as proportion of the population this decades. And we have to make this uh, uh, as an opportunity to, to turn the demographic dividend into a bonus. And this is only a short period of time, just 20 years uh, in the timeline of a nation is awfully, awfully brief. And if we see how the STEM jobs are projected for those decades, meaning this is part of those decades. You know, I've, I've, I've been talking about this for 10 years and, um, and uh, we've been moving very, very slowly, I'm afraid. And so uh, in brief, we need to increase this steam capacity in our workforce to be able to turn this uh, demographic dividend into bonus. And we haven't got very many years left. Otherwise, you know, the, the, the older population would overwhelm and the, also the younger population. And this, 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 the workforce will be 
would just constitute a smaller number of the population, smaller percentage, and they have to support the nation. It is awfully hard. So, um, but coming back to my title, why do we use astronomy? Well, because I'm an astrophysicist for one. And secondly, astronomy as a science, astrophysics as a science, so universal. You see the stars, you see the sky, we, we share the sky. And it's, it's unlike any other science. You know, you, you look at your grass, you look at your orchids, you know, it's sp sp special uh, specimen for, spe for certain areas. But the skies is the same for everyone. And it, it relates to all science. You, you can um, go down to any science and have a start in astronomy. It could be biology, it could be chemistry, and even we've got multidiscipline areas these days called astrochemistry, astrobiology, and people look for life elsewhere. And, and, and the way we look at things require technology. So people could start with the interest in astronomy, but they could go into instrumentation, they could go into um, computation and all those skills that are, are needed that could be used in other fields could be start uh, with interest in astronomy. And uh, it's also inspirational. You know, it, it, I can just go on and on about this and people are very easily inspired by looking at the sky. And um, um, looking at the sky during the day, you, you could only see very close objects like the sun, the moon. But if you see the sky in a very dark night, you could see actually very, very far into the universe. You could see galaxies, you could see stars, you could just throw in your imagination, it's just endless. And it, because we could see so many things, it's in a way uh, 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 for us a, a, a reflection. It, it provides us with objects uh, for us to compare ourselves with. You know, we get to understand our Earth better because we have been able to see other planets. We understand our star, uh, our home star, the sun, better because we've seen, uh, we've studied other stars. So there are many, many things that as far as physics or science is concerned, we have been learning about ourselves because we have seen more about the universe. So the, the goals of using astronomy as an entrance is that uh, astronomy provides a, a sustained interest. If, if you go directly into the mathematics, into the science, people, you know, get sort of scared or tired, you know, pretty quickly. But if you entice them with the stars, with the moon, and, you know, their interest is sustained. And that's the time you you pick up your, their interest in, in how the physics of the universe, how, how the world works, and what is the causal relation among various objects, among various phenomena. And that is a way to, to uh, uh, introduce to them and promote the power of rational thinking. It could be anything between, between you know, living beings, between living beings and uh, the, 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 the abiotic environment. And it's, it's many, many, uh, uh, because it's universal, you could compare how children in, in for example, in equator, along the equator countries live. And what about those children who live in far north or far south? It's just, uh, they're, they're the same human being, but they, uh, they experience different kind of season. So therefore, you know, they might have different appearance, but they're all the same human being. And uh, the way um, a STEAM or STEM is introduced is just often in, 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 uh, in ways of curiosity um, um, uh, leading into understanding. So you start with, with questions. Even though you might know the answer, you start with question, and it it it, uh, it helps the children to also have the courage to ask questions. Things that actually children ask lots and lots of questions when they're very young, but when they enter school, <laughs> strangely enough, they you know 
they don't ask as many questions as they. So we, we, we try to return their curiosity as something which is uh, valuable and as a way of learning. And because many of the projects are done in team, so it, it is also uh, promoting participation and mindfulness with discussion and, and, and listening and just um, um, paying attention and wait, be patient and all that. So uh, I'll probably be just very quick with this. Um, we, we have seen this zillions of times, but using astronomy, uh, we could just pinpoint a number that we could help uh, achieve these the various aspects of sustainable development goals. Education is, of course, and, and um, things that relate to natural resources like energy and water is something that we could do as a first step and also as later step if we develop technology. And in astronomy uh, internationally, the International Astronomical Union is very supportive for this. They even have a, a, an office called Office for astronomy for development, not astronomy for astronomy, but astronomy for development. And um, so um, how do we empower rational thinking? It's just to sustain their interest. You have to be able to relate with our local way of life. Because Indonesia is, is a large country with many, many ethnic groups, people with various backgrounds. You need to be able to know their their way of thinking to be able to, to deliver and, uh, and how their local mindset, that if there is any way of a hindrance in learning, we need to be able to identify that. And, um, and with this, astronomy makes uh, aspects of STEAM, physics, mathematics, everything feels fresh because it's, you come in from something that you like. You don't see the formula as the first thing you see. You don't, uh, you don't see the mathematics, you see the beautiful things. So therefore, uh, uh, you start with something, the curiosity, the awe of everything, and, and suddenly your brain is ready to, to, to perceive more and to want to know more. And uh, context is a big thing. So I'm, I'm just introducing you one context that is uh, very relevant to, to us. We are in the process of building a new observatory um, in Timor. And, you know, observatory needs to be in a very, very dark place with, uh, you know, uh, very, and usually it's very underdeveloped. So this is a juxtaposition of how the beautiful sky is uh, just in the same neighborhood with uh, poverty. It's very sad, but it's, it's for us the challenge. We need to grow together. Astronomy needs to grow, but this, this village also needs to grow in a way that is uh, part of uh, sustainable development goals. Um, so with this, of course, we, we could uh, start with many uh, topics, but uh, again, using astronomy, we start with uh, um, the earth, the, the relation between earth, the moon and the sun, that's why we have season and we ask where water is coming from. If it rains, it doesn't mean we have extra water, it's just a natural cycle of water. So we have the same amount of water since pretty much the, the, the earth was just uh, starting as a planet. So um, uh, understanding that the people need to uh, know how to conserve energy, conserve water, etc. And um, and we need to to uh, to introduce people. How we how do we get to know that? How we how do we get data? How data is important? And and how do we measure things? How do you know that your measurement is good enough, etc. So so these are building up. We don't give them the fact we make them measure themselves. We make them go out and see the, the nature themselves. And so a huge part of this is human capacity building. It, it, we start from teacher. And so therefore we have program with our partner, the, the alumni of a, a year uh, 1983, which um, I'm part of. Uh, we've been tra training teacher uh, 
in, the, in STEAM. And we've been working with university in uh, uh, each province, you know, there are universities um, uh, with uh, people who are interested in doing something to their local uh, people to develop their, their local region. So uh, we work a lot with them. With them, we understand more about the local situation. We in Bandung or in Jakarta, we, we live in, in very different um, ecosystem as such that we need to learn from the local people. So about uh, um, capacity building, we need to understand their learning environment. So what is the, the situation of the teacher, the learning facility, what kind of program they're running. So uh, we distinguish three uh, learning environments, the basic, the intermediate, the advanced. The basic, everything is just poor. The teacher is under uh, uh, developed, the school is understaffed and all the, all the misery you, you, you heard about the education, it's there. The intermediate is uh, uh, pretty much the average. So you've got pretty good school, pretty good uh, running program. The, school, the teachers are uh, pretty much well equipped and the advanced environment is usually in, in, in metropolitan. It's good to have all those uh, samples because we need to learn on, on the, uh, how, how, how children learn in different learning environment and how teacher are uh, developing themselves and how we could uh, tap into their uh, experiences. Uh, so uh, we, I have three parts on how we go about this team education. First of all, this material development. We need to have all this, the uh, necessary or the basics that uh, we think all children ought to know. And, uh, and we identify what uh, level they are uh, in their schools and we, we see their curriculum as a reference. We, we, don't, we don't change anything about the curriculum, but we need to know um, how they're doing with the curriculum because uh, it's a way of uh, us to understand the cognitive level of the students that we are aiming uh, this, the, the teacher to deliver. And, um, uh, and we can have very rich program, but we need to, to focus on very important ideas, make sure that they're delivered well and make sure that they're delivered in various ways so that people could see the important issue from various perspectives. Um, and uh, while doing so, we, we again remind them of where they are, how, uh, how this is uh, relevant to their way of living and make sure that they understand the environment is something that uh, we need to take care. So, uh, and then we, depends on the situation, we could deliver the material in packages from topic wise or level wise. We could have the same topic, for example, about the earth, moon, sun relation, about energy, for example, about water. But we talk to primary school teacher, to secondary school teacher, we talk differently. So it's the same topic, but different cognitive level. And we, we use different activities. Um, I can go through this uh, later if there's question, but it's just a quick sample for, for primary school. Um, um, total solar eclipse is something which is amazing. It is very, very special. It, it doesn't occur very often. So when it occurs, so, you know, people give all their attention. So in 2016, we were fortunate to, to experience this. And um, so this was our way of uh, uh, introducing the children and also the teacher on how to teach geometry, mathematics and reflection and, and projection and measurement and uh, having, having the, the total solar eclipse is just the biggest, biggest fortune that we could have because the physics is very simple. The mathematics is simple and it's real. So, so it, you know, it, it is something that, uh, you know, I could talk and talk and talk forever because it's, it's so great fun. It, 
and it was very successful. And um, I'll, I'll go through this if, if you want to, but and part, the second part of the STEAM education is uh, preparing the, the human resource. So it's for teachers and facilitators. For a very basic uh, region, um, teachers are not enough. The, the schools are understaffed, as I mentioned, but there are other people who are interested in helping with the education. It, it could be anybody. It could be just parents, it could be uh, public officers, it could be uh, religious leaders who are concerned with uh, how education is is uh, is going behind in their area and they want him to be able to to help so we talk to them and we make sure that they got the material they they got trained and they we, we listen to them deliver so we you know we have a, we have a building up relationship and uh, and it's it, it's important that we are there uh, they know that we are there. Of course, we are in a separate place and at the moment we, we are doing things online, but uh, we keep things um, in, in good connection, making sure that they're, you know, we are not just giving them training materials and then we, we leave and hop into the next place. And we, we, we try to be, to be faithful to them because they are, they are keys to the success of this program. And the third one is the implementation. Uh, we need to have a clear strategy because if we have to travel, if we have to provide the material, print things and everything, it, it could be quite costly. So you need to be to careful with uh, your calculation of logistics and making sure that you know, your timing and everything is, you don't go to a place when it's already raining in season and when it could come because of no road. So, Everything should be calculated rather, rather um, carefully, and you do things very systematically this way. And it's a good exercise for us, actually. And this is a good exercise for the local universities because then they they get to know how we run programs and they learn to make their own proposals and run their own programs. So it's it's been good um, and capacity building, and uh, everybody have their own network. So. Uh, for example, uh, we work with uh, the Ganesha uh, 83 class, for example, and they, they have their own resources, they have their own network. So this year, since the, we cannot visit the, the schools, so we do things online. For example, the, past, the, the last four months, we've been training teacher how to do simple coding. It's great fun and they like it. And uh, uh, you think coding is just for mathematics or science class? No, they can teach arts using this kind of coding. So it, it means that the, this, the A bit, the, the arts bit for, for this team is something that uh, not just enrichment, it's part of the essential humanity that we need to, to uh, pick it up every now and then. Sometimes it is the front runner uh, because it is the uh, it is the uh, thing that, that makes people enjoy the more. And, we, yes. yeah, um, Are we, we running out? Ran out? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll just uh, show you this picture, um, how we use energy uh, uh, development using um, renewable resources in Timor and students and teachers uh, design and help uh, put together. And uh, I'll just run this video while I'm talking. So this is how we uh, help providing clean water by collecting fog. And we built uh, this um, automatic water monitoring system. Uh, it's a nice, it's a very clear working because it's transparent and it's very uh, cheap material that we could purchase in just stores because just, you know, just bowls for sauce, ketchup and things and we put them together, it's very cheap. And we, are, we have that in, in Timor working at the moment. Okay, I'll just end this and um, thank you for uh, letting me share all this and uh, uh, put uh, the uh, people who support us and collaborate with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Primana. I am so sorry, I've got to cut you short. No, that's uh, it's a fantastic work that you do, and I, I do appreciate uh, looking at the uh, 
the, the uh, works that you do touch many lives. Um, I'm just going to, it's interesting the way you, you started off where you say, right, how do we interact with Mother Earth? And I'm just going to quote what you said. The sky is the same for everyone. So I leave it for, for everybody to, to kind of interpret what it means. So thank you once again for the presentation. So we will move on to the third speaker. Uh, Assistant Professor Chok Chai Yuan Yong is in the field of science education program, the Faculty of Education, Konkan University in Thailand. He is also the vice president of the Science Education Association in Thailand. His interesting research includes student learning in physics, science teaching based on constructivism, science literacy, STEM education, cultural issues in science education. That's quite interesting. And his current project is on enhancing teachers to develop STEM learning activities in school settings. So without further ado, the floor is yours, Dr. Chok Chai. Thank you, Professor Jong, to invite me to join this session. I very feel very honorable to share my idea. Uh, uh, let me share my screen. Yes. Okay. 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 So, uh, everyone, I would like to share you some highlight of activities STEM or STEAM education in Thailand that I get involved for uh, probably five years ago in Thailand and, and uh, in Asian country and in, in Asia also. So uh, I probably start from uh, the concept of STEM education. As we know, the 21st century student outcome are uh, represented here. Uh, people uh, focus about 21st century skills. So uh, many traditional teaching, we focus on the, the green one, it means uh, the key subject, but now we focus more about the how to practice this kind of knowledge in everyday life. We need life and career skill. We need learning and innovation skill. We need information media and technology skill. This one, everyone know from the literature. So uh, the STEM education and STEAM education is mean we need people to practice uh, knowledge for the solving problem for their career for uh, everyday life. So we need to provide those kind of students to uh, survive in the 21st century, work and life in the 21st century. Uh, so the, the P21 suggested that uh, we need to teach core subject weaving for the, the, the theme, many theme like the global awareness, entrepreneurial literacy, civic literacy, health literacy, and environmental literacy. So we need to teach uh, the subject to this theme. So to do that, we need to practice knowledge for, for those theme. So it's quite a broadened view of the STEM or STEAM education now. We need to study a lot about that. <laughs> yeah. So the, the STEM and STEAM education is uh, another concept that promotes student knowledge, skill, and expertise to prepare student success in work and life in the 21st century. So this is my conclusion. Uh, it's another literature mentioned about uh, content and practice here from the literature. And um, they suggest about engineer design. So on the way to practice knowledge, we need to decide something. So the engineering design will help us. In fact, uh, it's not uh, only uh, engineering design. In fact, there are many designs to can help us to handle with the STEM education learning activity. But uh, it's quite popular in Thailand. We uh, follow the idea of engineering, engineering process design so in Thailand. So uh, what I'm going to highlight to you uh, today is uh, I would like to uh, 
present what the situation that Thailand promotes STEM education vision. We, uh, from my perceive, we start is clearly per, uh, starting in 2013, uh, and we have many kind of uh, many workshop for for professional development for STEM education teacher uh, from 2014 2018. And uh, there are some perception about STEM education pedagogy in Thailand that I mentioned before is uh, they for try to integrate it, uh, teaching and learning to the uh, for, for practicing knowledge to engineering process this uh, in engineering process this side, sorry. So uh, it's really clearly now that we are more understanding about that. I mean, in Thailand, the curriculum reform and the STEM education uh, get involved in there from 20, 2018. They uh, change the curriculum a little bit, but not uh, totally change. And uh, we have semi or STEM education uh, established in September 2019. It's quite really earlier. Um, what we promote STEM education vision in Thailand. I learned that it's probably like in UK, USA, and in, 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 in other country, the IPST, the in, Institute for Promoting Science Technology Teaching in Thailand is called the, uh, for instance, agency in Thailand to launch the, the project for science, mathematics, teaching and learning. They provide the STEM ambassador so uh, there are many scientists uh, to be the amb ambassador to uh, talk about the STEM project, STEM research in the school. And many school and university STEM centers is very popular uh, around seven or eight years ago. We try to build up to understand the STEM education. We have STEM festival also. Uh, so many activity uh, launched by IPST. And uh, to build up the community, they award the good teacher from uh, across the nation to be the outstanding performance on STEM education. Uh, from my perception, uh, in that year, it's probably not clear understanding about the STEM education, but they try to build up people to uh, like, uh, build up community. So this kind of people, very outstanding in the science and mathematics teacher, they get award for the, the national STEM education outstanding teacher. Many of them there is, is my Previous teacher is my advice. Advice before in there, and uh, the workshop professional development STEM education teacher. Uh, we start to training teacher on twenty fourteen until now. There are many uh, workshop and many uh, institute to funding. It's quite a big project. It's uh, more than. In, in some projects, more than 400 Thai baht go to run across the nation. So uh, the project like IPST workshop, the Chevron Enjoy side is is, is a non-government agency to can handle. So not only the government sector, but non-government is also get involved and try to enhance uh, STEM education in uh, basic school. And OBEC is mean uh, OBEC uh, MOE is the uh, uh, Office of Basic Education Commission for uh, Ministry of Education. I get involved in this project, and this project also from my university KKU Konkan University. Uh, here uh, is uh, some picture about they organize the online workshop to train uh, how to decide the activity, uh, teach students to decide something. Mm -hmm. 
before that, we never teach a uh, student to decide. We just teach content of knowledge, but now we try to train teacher how to decide and apply knowledge for deciding. And this uh, uh, is quite a big project to training teacher. Uh, the OBEC STEM education training, I'm the one who trained them across the nation. So we try to show them how to decide and uh, apply knowledge for the designing. So it's the, the difficult thing is, is uh, how to arrive in curriculum content standard to, uh, to the de designing. So we organize workshop across the nation, uh, you know, 15 workshop, many area. So we travel a lot across the nation. Uh, we enhance them to develop learning activity to the engineering process design. So uh, many, uh, many steps about that is, I mean, people in Thailand is uh, try to adapt the engineer process, uh, process design to, to uh, organize STEM education learning activity. It's not only this one, many kind of that. Uh, this is uh, what teacher try to uh, share the idea how to decide to the uh, their STEM education learning activity there. So everyone try to like uh, this invent something <laughs> yeah. So so they develop the prototype. They understand that uh, the STEM education is this about something to decide and uh, de develop some prototype. This is the teacher perception and the idea sharing here another one another example it's, it's like some people understand it's like it's, it's the side project or but uh, it's different a little bit because we need to not only forget about scientific process we try to thinking about human need and try to uh, decide for how can people use this so different a little bit about uh, science and STEM project. Uh, because of that, uh, we growing up, I think we growing up a lot, we try to organize the STEM education across the nation. And then uh, the OBEC uh, asked me to organize the international conference because I am STEM start from uh, 2018. And then I try to invite uh, people, education from ASEAN. We have people from Mindanao, like uh, Dr. Amy. We have uh, from Indonesia, from Malang, like uh, Dr. Professor Hadi Suwono, and uh, Professor Lilia from uh, Malaysia, and uh, from Vietnam, uh, Dr. Nam from Vietnam, and me to push the project. and. Uh, from Taiwan also, Professor Shang. So uh, it's quite uh, good to uh, develop the group of STEM education. We start from the first year in 2018, and then uh, next year we going to organize the conference in 2021 uh, in Taiwan. So Professor Professor Shang to organize this conference as the fourth conference. So uh, I uh, may. I invite you guys to join our conference for the next year if uh, the COVID-19 is, is, is no more for 2021. Okay. Uh, and uh, because of uh, trying to force about the STEM education, I think uh, we change also the new paradigm of subject content and practicing. Uh, the MOE try to uh, in the content standard. Before 2018, the technology subject in basic education is like this in occupation, uh, sorry, occupation and technology. You will see here uh, is quite a stain about technology put in here, home economic life and family and computer side here in the same uh, department <laughs> for the basic education. And after 2018, we try to move the digital technology, computational, science, coding uh, 
in the same department, physics and biology, chemistry, I mean, in the basic education. But in the level of university, it's, uh, it's like this long time ago, but it's quite wonder why is the uh, computer is put in the uh, life and family like that. It pro probably the paradigm is changed. So it's quite good new for us to move STEM education in Thailand because now paradigm is changed. Another good news is, is uh, the assessment. I think uh, the assessment for STEM education should be changed. So it's quite good new for us. Now they move to comp competency-based curriculum. So uh, we need to assess about student practicing something. It's not only the content. So uh, good for the STEM education, I think. So it's uh, quite a difficult move to do that because uh, we try to change the new paradigm for the teacher, then we can move. And because of uh, our perception about the STEM education like that, so we try to uh, develop learning activity and try to share the idea as a publish some paper. So our paper uh, related about to practice uh, the, the knowledge in, uh, in the context for the solving problem in the real life. So we try to bring the issue in the everyday life to alignment in the curriculum, what should be done? What should we do? So like this, uh, this paper about the uh, floating restaurant, we try to teaching about, ask them to decide about physics knowledge, to decide some business as a restaurant. Another one is uh, this one, I have chance to share the idea and work with uh, Vietnam in uh, Taiwan. So we try to uh, bring the issue of Tân uh, Cương Tea Village over there. Is there is have the business, so uh, village business over there. It's quite a good uh, context to bring to the classroom and ask them to decide the STEM learning activity. And uh, from we we work with the Indonesia also from uh, Professor uh, Pak Supriyano. So we ask students to decide. Indonesia is quite a, a many students interesting about STEM education learning activity. This is uh, just one of them. They try to decide water pressure booster pump in a rural, rural area. So uh, students probably can learn physics from the, their context and try to design and practice knowledge. And this is uh, another example from Philippines. We work with uh, uh, Professor Amy from uh, Ilikan. So this is uh, the world of STEM education from the mathematic uh, eyes. I mean, so they try to see about linear equation in two variables. So, uh, to use this uh, concept for solving problem in 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 life, they try to decide some how holds power consumption calculator application. So, what we try to think about the STEM education. Uh, another one is uh, when we think about the awareness uh, to practice uh, the content knowledge in everyday life and not only just practice for human need, but the awareness based on the culture and our tradition. Is this the thing about art, you know? So the, the STEAM education will happen. This uh, learning activity, we start from the context also, but uh, we put some awareness of art in there. So the uh, pedagogy approach is about ethical dilemma plastic, okay. We, uh, this paper is going to publish uh, 2021 as a book, the book, uh, book chapter. Okay. Uh, this another movement is, I think is uh, good for uh, Southeast Asian country. Now the uh, Southeast Asian Minister of Education Organization Regional Center for STEM Education was established from 
September 28, 2019. In uh, this uh, center, they try to training teacher also, and they uh, provide some research funding for uh, Asian country also. This year, they start from Thailand because this uh, center uh, located in Bangkok, Thailand. So they start from Thailand Thai to funding. Uh, this is the, the proposal funding for proposed from them. So they start from uh, uh, Thai to ask educator to bring the module for this foreign topic. So the issue like water management improve agriculture productivity like this. And I think uh, it's quite interesting issue for, for STEM education, but uh, the, uh, they try to ask you to alignment to the curriculum in, the, in, the, uh, in each country is quite difficult to do. So it's quite challenging here. Uh, I just share you about what happened uh, for in Thailand. Uh, so it's so not only really we, yeah. we are really running out of time because there's quite a number of questions. If you can okay, uh, okay. finish up, so yeah. sorry for that. Okay, I I, I think finish here. So his this is another movement that we we run academy professional academy so to, to training teacher. So it's, it's I think this is all for my sharing idea today. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Cho Chai. I, uh, my apologies again, I've got to cut short your presentation because um, I was like uh, looking through the uh, slides, there's quite a number of questions coming in. So um, once again, on behalf of the University of Malaya STEM Center, well, I really would like to thank all the three speakers uh, for the superb presentation. Um, we have learned quite a bit what you have done at your country. So um, we have now come to the last session, which is the Q&A sessions. There's quite a number of questions coming in. So I'm just gonna run through. Uh, I, there's quite a few to Prof. Cheryl. So um, you, you wanna go ahead and answer the questions as, as you go along and um, see how it goes from there, Cheryl. So I'm kind of like going to give everybody three minutes or so to, to address uh, questions that uh, comes in. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yong. Actually, um, I addressed some, uh, some of the questions, but uh, the few ones are, you know, some uh, related factors to the ones I mentioned about uh, fewer students choosing STEM for senior high school in our case. Uh, like, for example, uh, there's a need to build more STEM senior high schools uh, because, for example, if uh, the next STEM school is quite far from, you know, the hometown of a student, then that student would settle for... Uh, a senior high school track that is available nearby uh, because it will be more expensive for his parents to send him to the next STEM school or, next, or the nearest STEM school. So that's a, that's a very good point that was raised earlier. And then regarding, um, you know, whether uh, the grade requirement for STEM, uh, for getting into a STEM track, uh, I'm a, a bit ambivalent about that. Uh, I'm a bit, a bit torn really about that because on one hand, um, you know that high academic expectation when you look at the grades and when you, uh, you, have, you communicate high academic expectation, it leads to student self-efficacy, which leads to higher student achievement. But on the other hand, there's what you call the growth mindset, the implicit theory of intelligence um, advanced by uh, Dr. Carol Dweck, saying that uh, people learn uh, continuously and that we have the capacity to learn and, uh, and continuously do that uh, throughout our lifetime. And so, um, it's a delicate balance, really, uh, of uh, you know being able to really survive being in STEM, uh, but also uh, you know getting that STEM identity, getting the confidence that despite the challenges in the actual um, uh, in the actual exam or in the actual classes, others uh, need to be um, adjustments also in the way STEM is taught in schools. No? so like for example, the pedagogies as mentioned earlier. Uh, I'm, I agree with Dr. Chok Chai regarding design thinking, uh, engineering design process uh, as a way to really cultivate inventiveness and creative thinking uh, among our youth. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Cheryl. Right, uh, Dr. Chok Chai, there's two questions there. Um, I'm just going to start with Lee. Lee Marisa asked, uh, you, you talk about assessment. So she wants to know, is there any specific assessment that you are implementing in your class? And another one, Jasper Perez asked, right, uh, on assessment also is really a, a difficult one. 
And uh, can we have something within an uh, ASEAN initiative assessment for the, on the core competencies? So perhaps you would like to address that, uh, Dr. Chokcha? Yes, yes. Uh, from the assessment, I, uh, I think uh, we should learn from the engineering education. Uh, I read many papers from engineering education. They are quite good example about assessment for the formative assessment and performance assessment. Uh, I think it's quite many idea in, in those paper from the, the side of engineering education and technology education uh, to decide something. So they, uh, to, they decide to assessment student practice something. Uh, it's, so it's not the score, it's like some, uh, uh, how to, Rubik score to, to monitor, to enhance. So uh, the paradigm of, uh, seeing how students learn need to be changed yeah uh, then then we can find many many uh, tools to do this so we need to see the paradigm of formative assessment i mean try to enhance students to uh, finish something to to learn something from their practice even they fail or success is okay mm -hmm. uh okay. yeah i think Shortly, we need to change the paradigm and then we need to uh, uh, adapt about the performance, performance assessment to, to do. Okay. Right. Um, another one, uh, this is from the YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Amelia asks With this new normal, how do you design engaging professional development program for STEM educators? I mean, we are all usually when we talk about activities in STEM, it's very much experience, ex experiential in, the, in, in nature. So how are we going to do that? So perhaps Dr. Primana, you would like to start? Thank you, Professor Young. Yes, this is a challenge for everybody who has lots of uh, their teaching uh, requiring lab and you know have uh, developing skills. Um, in astronomy, we have been a little bit lucky because we could do uh, night sky observation virtually. So we connect the public to our observatory and they could just join us as if they are, you know, behind the telescope. It was great fun. But we need to really seriously think in about the more serious part of the learning, you know, how to operate the telescope and everything like that. And, and people, for example, who teach um, biology and uh, chemistry, how are they going to uh, make sure that people know how to, to you know, do the, the lab work if they've never gone to the lab. So it's been a huge discussion, but uh, I think lots and uh, lots of people are developing a uh, uh, lecture through video. Of course, it's, it's not the same as coming to the lab yourself, but it's probably the, the best that we could uh, prepare at the moment. Of course, we're still waiting for everything to turn uh, to the better, but uh, I think we, we still need to use the time. And uh, for example, okay, let's do other things in the meantime, uh, do data processing, understanding data, because big data is the big thing coming, right? So let's, let's learn how to code, let's learn how to use computer. So when we could uh, eventually return to the lab, you know, we have done our parts uh, understanding the computer. So basically, we're just doing other things at the moment. Um, so this is not really a solution to, to the question, but uh, you trying to, to make use of the time as best as we can. Right, thank you very much. Cheryl, uh, what's your thought on that? How do we go about moving in STEM activities? And also there's one question addressed to you on the performance uh, from the Philippines and, you know, because science is exposed very late in, in the education studies. So perhaps you wanna address that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I agree with you, Dr. Yong. Um, probably I want to talk about the experience that we had because uh, uh, in the in the previous months, we've been uh, giving out you know online innovation workshop, and we were quite successful about it. Uh, the key probably is, of course, um, sometimes there's a problem with connection, right? But what we did was to supplement it with you know a Moodle or a, a sort of an on um, 
uh, a repository. It can be a Google Classroom. It can be a Google Drive, a shared folder. Uh, for them, for example, for participants who are dropped from the from the call or from the, the from the synchronous session, they can still participate. Uh, they can go back to the recordings. They can they have some asynchronous tasks to attend to. So that's what we did. And then um, we were able to do synchronous sessions. We we're able to, you know, for example, in the case of STEM and PIVET, uh, the one with ILO, we were able to do it for 120 participants. But the key there was, you know, to have several facilitators running the breakout rooms with you. And um, of course, preparation for that is quite uh, intensive. We have to do tech runs prior to the actual event because all the facilitators need to know when to jump into the breakout room. Uh, and then we also use some platforms, like for example, collaborative platforms like a Padlet, but you can also use Google Jamboard. So participants, no matter where they are, can still you know, collaboratively do ideation using Padlet, using sticky notes, using Google Jamboard, and they're quite, uh, uh, they, they're quite effective. Uh, we were able to see it among our participants. So just to share, like for example, the online innovation workshop that we ran for the University of the Philippines, um, five of those programs were actually applied for grants right now. So uh, they are already in the pipeline uh, in the next few months. Um, these uh, projects will uh, really start. So that, that came out of that innovation workshop that we did. Uh, regarding the... Um, Oh, what's the other one regarding um, uh, starting late in the game? Um, one of the things that we're doing for the Education Futures Program, um, because I, we, are, we know very well that uh, all the other countries joining PISA and Teams, they have prepared prior to joining. Uh, we are all aware of that as educators. And um, uh, what we need to understand now is based on evidence, uh, how we, we you know, performed and what are some factors that really affect the performance of our students in large-scale assessment. So the Department of Education is embarking on a data science-based uh, intervention strategies for that. So uh, we are partnering with AIM, the Asian Institute of Management uh, Data Science Program for dealing with AI-based intervention strategies. Also, uh, uh, that's not just for large-scale assessment. We're also dealing. Uh, we're also doing another project with them on uh, what you call um, intelligent system for learning and development uh, for improving teacher quality. So these are, you know, some developments that are going on inside the Department of Education that we are happy to share. Uh, but improvements, as I say, uh, it's not overnight. Uh, it will take some years to really surface and uh, really be felt. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rochelle. So what is very clear, you're ex experimenting all sorts of um, platform out there to, to reach out to students, yeah? Okay, perhaps Chok Chai, you would like to share, how do we go about promoting STEMs when we are all locked in our rooms and our homes? Sorry, sorry, say that again. Sorry. Um, yes, uh, in this pandemic, everybody is all doing remotely. So the question is, how, how are we going to execute all sorts of activities in, in a STEM? Because uh, as what Dr. Primena mentioned, how can you do all these labs activities when you're simply stuck in your room? Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, in fact, uh, the STEM education is uh, we, we, we not only in the room, in the classroom, but we, we need the cooperation uh, to build the leadership uh, between teacher and also the, from the parents. So a bit because some designing is not finished in the classroom, we, it's, they need to practice outside. So it's, this is another problem for Thailand because uh, the parent is not uh, perceived that this is the part of them to do for uh, teaching and learning for, for their students. So, so, uh, to, so the, the thing is we need to understand not only the teacher and student, but uh, the school leadership uh, and parents also to do this. And then we uh, cooperation to do this STEM education. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chok Chai. Right. Uh, really, it uh, looks like the time is not on our side. So uh, once again, on behalf of the University of Malaya, thank you so much to all the attendees uh, following to this channel and also to the YouTube channel. 
Right. Uh, on behalf of the uh, STEM Center, University of Malaya, I thank you all. But before we let you go off, can we do a final poll? Because uh, what are the topics that would to you? So we're going to run another poll. Um, Ikwan, please put up the poll, yes. In which, um, okay, I'm going to read off. Which topics would you be keen to hear in the upcoming webinar? Uh, this is a multiple choice, meaning to say that you could uh, uh, tick all, you could tick some. Number one, is there a, a role of arts in STEM? Women in STEM, engaging students in STEM, STEM topics, promoting SDGs. Uh, there's a typo there, through STEM, which I think uh, Dr. Premana has actually mentioned in brief in, in her presentation. So uh, please, uh, we would like to hear for what you have said, what other topics would be of interest to you. Um, that's something that uh, for us educators at higher education would love to address to in some of the topics that you would find uh, useful. Yeah. So I think this is about a few seconds. So, um, so please put in your results there and uh, Ikwan. Okay, lovely. So the results are we've got a very high percentage of engaging students in STEM topics, which I think all the three of you has mentioned it very clearly in which uh, the engagement of students, engagement of teachers are, are extremely important. Thank you so much for sharing this. You guys are lovely, all the attendees, yeah? So we have come to the end of it. So um, on behalf of University of Malaya, thank you. But before we let you go off, I would like to pass over this session to Dr. Mars for her closing remark. Thank you once again, bye-bye. Thank you very much, Prof. Young. Yes, uh, thank you. This is a very fruitful seminar. I think we, I think there's a, a lot of discussion across the curriculum pedagogy, uh, the STEM in community, and also the application of STEM from across all three countries. Like, so we hope that uh, the discussion from this seminar won't be stopping here. So we are looking forward to the collaboration between our countries so we can move forward and hopefully we can promote and we can have our future generation to embark in STEM educations. So because this is a very important to our nations and especially to our uh, region, Southeast Asia. So as a closing remark, I would like to say thank you very much to all our speakers. We have Prof. Cheryl, Dr. Chok Chais and Dr. Primanas, and of course, my lovely Prof. Yong, who have moderated these sessions uh, successfully with a lot of questions. So thank you very much to all the attendees please don't forget to fill in your the registration link for your certificates that we will email to you very soon and please don't hesitate to email to us at stem.um.edu.my if you have any further questions thank you very much and hopefully to see you soon in our future coming webinar thank you bye bye thank bye, you bye bye thank, thank you. you thank you very much everyone bye. thank you happy new year thank you yes happy new year 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 I will connect you. with you soon. Yes. Yes. yes, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.